Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hyperthyroidism versus hypothyroidism. In the previous videos I covered in depth the pathophysiology, the pharmacology, nursing interventions, and patient education for these two conditions. And what I want to do in this video is I wanted to have a quick review and let you see these two conditions or signs and symptoms, causes, treatments side by side so you can see what the differences are. Are. Now, after you watch this video, be sure to go to my website, registernursern.com, and take the free quiz that will actually test you on your knowledge between these two conditions. And a card should be popping up so you can access that. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about hyperthyroidism. Let the name of the condition help you. Hyper means high, excessive. So in this condition, there's an excessive production of thyroid hormones. However, on the flip side with hypothyroidism, there is a low production of thyroid hormones. What do thyroid hormones do? They play a vital role in how fast you burn food, stimulates your sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for your reflexes, your reaction time, how fast food travels through our digestive system, increases your heart rate, your blood pressure, and your temperature. And if you have too much of this going on, you're gonna have everything at an accelerated rate. So you're gonna have a super fast heart rate. Lo super high blood pressure. However, if you have not a lot, you're gonna have a slow heart rate, low temperature, things like that. So what causes these conditions? In hyperthyroidism, it, a cause can be eating too much iodine. Remember, iodine plays a role in T3 and T4 production. Your thyroid takes iodine, and whenever you get the iodine in there, it will produce that T3 and T4. However, with hypothyroidism, a cause can be not having enough iodine, so you don't consume enough of it. Another cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune condition where your body produces TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, and this acts like TSH on the body. So it constantly is telling the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. Another cause is toxic nodular Gorder, also known as TNG. This is where nodular growths produce excessive thyroid hormones. Another cause is thyroid replacement medication. Say you're taking too much Synthroid, you get toxic. It will flip you into hyperthyroidism. Now hypo, another cause is Hashimoto's disease. This is an autoimmune condition as well, but it's different than Graves. And this is where the body attacks the thyroid gland, so it damages it. So the thyroid gland doesn't work anymore and you don't have any thyroid hormone being produced. Another cause is taking too much antithyroid medications. Um, you're in toxicity like PTU or Tapazol. Another cause, maybe they have a pituitary tumor and this would stop your anterior pituitary gland from releasing TSH. And whenever that's not releasing TSH, your thyroid gland isn't gonna be stimulated to produce T3 and T4. Now, what are the life-threatening complications in these conditions? In hyperthyroidism, if it's not treated properly, they can enter into thyroid storm, which we covered that in another video in detail. So if you wanna watch that video, you can access the card and you can watch that video. What's the life-threatening complication if hypothyroidism isn't treated? Myxedema coma, and we talked about that in depth and you can access that in a card to watch the whole patho nursing interventions about that. So how do these patients look? What um, are they gonna look like with hyper and hypothyroidism? They are gonna be the complete opposite of each other. So if you see one symptom, look at what the opposite of that symptom would be and it's gonna be that condition. So let's look at it. Okay, signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Here you're gonna have weight loss because you're burning calories at an excessive rate. Remember T3 and T4 play a role in that. They're gonna have heat intolerance, so they're gonna be sweaty. They're gonna have a gorder. This is very common in Graves' disease from the thyroid gland being overstimulated. It starts to swell. And this is also present, gorder can be present in hypothyroidism as well. They'll be restless, irritable. Again, that's, that's overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system and the heart rate really fast, also fast heart rate, diarrhea, unable to focus mentally. They're just really wired have oily skin, be nervous, and menstrual problems. Now let's flip it over and see what they look like in hypothyroidism. 
they're going to have weight gain because they're not burning calories very fast. They're going to be intolerant to cold. Um, in mixed edema coma, they can actually go into hypothermia because their temperature is not being regulated. They can have a possible goiter, and this is prevalent in Hashimoto's disease. And this is just due to the um, oh, the stimulation of the thyroid gland just being stimulated constantly, and it's just not working. So it starts to swell. They can be extremely tired, fatigued, have a slow heart rate, constipation, memory loss, mixed edema, which is a waxy appearance of swelling on of the skin, especially in the face and the eyes. They'll have dry skin, depression, and menstrual problems. Now, what is the treatment for these two conditions? Okay, for hyperthyroidism treatment, what are we gonna do? We have a problem with too much thyroid hormone. So what would we do? We would want to give them anti-thyroid medications to decrease those levels. Common ones prescribed, tapazole, also known as methamazole, PTU, also called propothyroidocele, iodid solutions like Lugol solution. Another thing usually prescribed are beta blockers, such as Endrol. Why are beta blockers prescribed? To help with those signs and symptoms that's going on with this patient. They have a fast heart rate, they'll have a high blood pressure, they'll be sweaty, and that'll help decrease that. Another thing is they may be um, prescribed radioactive iodine therapy, and remember that goes back to how your thyroid gland takes thyroid, I mean takes iodine and produces T3 and T4. So whenever they take this, usually in a capsule, this is special iodine, it's radioactive, so it's gonna go there and destroy the thyroid gland. And also a thyroidectomy, which is removal of the thyroid gland. And these patients remember this, for hyperthyroidism, avoid salicylates and food slash supplements with iodine because this increases thyroid hormones and we don't want to increase thyroid hormones in this condition. Now, what are the treatments for hypothyroidism? Um, problem is we don't have enough thyroid hormones, so we're gonna give them some thyroid hormone. Typically, Synthroid is the most popular. It's a thyroid replacement hormone. Um, with these patients, you want to avoid sedatives and narcotics because they were very sensitive to them and it can actually send them into mixed edema coma. So watch those medications. Okay, so that is about hyper and hypothyroidism. Now go take that quiz on my website, registerednursrn.com and check out the whole NCLEX review series on the thyroid. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.